You know what sticks in my craw? When you click on a YouTube video and find that you've been deceived by the little cartoon character in the thumbnail. That the real person behind the channel is not the svelte, adorable anime character that their icon would lead you to believe. Let's do something about that, shall we? Coming to you from beautiful downtown Fortitude Valley, it's the Harry Gold Show, with your host, Harry Gold. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the program. It has been popular with YouTubers for years now to use cartoon versions of themselves in their branding. These illustrations will have their hair and their clothes, but beyond that, they have a sort of universal, cutesy cartoon face. They never truly capture the person's likeness. And that is unacceptable. Now, some would say I'm missing the point. These are meant to be stylized and endearing cartoon avatars, not representational portraits. We're not gunning for a space in the Louvre here. Well, to those folks I say, that's not good enough. You simpering apologists? Caricatures aren't about being cute. They're about making a grotesque mockery of your every blemish and exploiting your insecurities for the entertainment of everybody but you. As such, tonight I'm going to rework some popular internet personalities branding so that it really looks like them. Starting with... Markiplier. A.K.A. Mark E. Fishbuck, A.K.A. The mouth from that video with the cats with human mouths that go meow. For those who aren't familiar, Markiplier is a gaming YouTuber whose subscriber count sits at a cool quarter of a PewDiePlex. For many years now, Marky Mark has used this drawing of himself in his branding across all platforms. And it's a nice drawing. It's cute, it's vibrant, it's recognisable, but it's not the real Markiplier. Let me show you what I mean. For starters, Marky Moo doesn't have a pointy little anime nose. Mark's proboscis is long and broad and beefy. Now, the uninitiated nitpicker would be tempted to point out he also lacks that magenta crumb catcher in real life, but this is a perennial part of his look, so it gets a pass. What's more important is we need to know what lives under his lip foliage. Mm, just as I suspected. He's got a bad case of anime mouth. That won't do at all. Markiplonkus is a pretty excitable guy. And when he gets excited, his mouth goes big and his eyes go th We should see both rows of those pearly whites, but not too much liver in those lips. His eyes are fairly close together. And not so round. He's got that tough guy squint, like Clint Eastwood, or John Wayne, or half of Popeye. His eyebrows are a little less like Jack Black in School of Rock, and a little more like a small piece of a shrunken Scott Bakula, right in the middle of his forehead. Face shape is all important when it comes to capturing a likeness, and this one needs a tweak around the jawline. Yeah, this is big chin time. You could use that thing to shovel Sour Patch Kids ice cream. Tactically. Now, I could give the artist guff for the style of Mark's hair, and the lack thereof on his cow catcher, but this was drawn back in the prehistoric year of 2012 CE. A simpler time, before Mark grew some spin effects around the old watering hole, and went on a magical hair dye adventure with PewDiePie and Jacksepticeye. Pie. It does need an update nonetheless, for the sake of canonical accuracy. He wears his hair a little longer these days, which changes the shape of his head quite a lot. It makes it look less like a bullet. And to finish off, let's put the moustache back where it was. Perfect. One cartoon fixed and ready to go. You're welcome, Mark. But wait, there's more. Those of you who watch old Fishboy on the regs will be familiar with one more nugget of YouTuber branding. Specifically, Lixian. Marco's editor, who frequently pops up in Mark's videos by way of this little grey self-portrait. Here we see the second cardinal sin of cartoon portraits, right after anime face syndrome. And that is... The, the Circle, Circle Head. Head. 
So many people draw themselves with a rotund head bone, when it is so atypically the case in real life. There are exceptions. But, by some quirk of fate, some cosmic joke at the expense of humanity, it is never those who draw themselves as circle heads. Lixian has a long face and Colin Farrell eyebrows. The hair is pretty much on the money, but we're going to have to return this face to adventure time from whence it birthed and install something new. We can redraw him. We have the technology. See, what a handsome chap. Now you know why Mark keeps him hidden behind that innocuous little smiley man. Can't have that kind of competition on the channel. Next up, I'd like to finish with a bang. So it's only fitting that we end with the most subscribed to non-mega corporation on this platform. PewDiePie, alias Felix Shelberg, gamer deity, fully credentialed meme lord, and controversial YouTuber, if you spell the word controversial with air quotes the size of aircraft carriers around it. The problem is, over the years, the Pie Guy has changed his channel's look almost as often as he's changed his own. The only recurring theme across all of them is not quite capturing PewDiePie's likeness. Except for the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure style illustration from his weekly Reddit review intro. That one's not bad. Because I drew that. Felix's exact words on the matter were... Is this Full Metal Alchemist reference? That's so cool. I love my favorite anime. Praise from Caesar is praise indeed. In looking for dubious likenesses to rectify, you might suggest starting with the channel's current look, and all the nine-year-olds that watch PewDiePie might be forgiven for assuming that his present-day iconography depicts the Swedish millionaire himself. You would, however, be revealing yourself as a sorry excuse for a bro, and a lackluster nerd to boot. This is, in fact, Rio, a character from Devil Man Crybaby. Famously, the winner of the stupidest name for an anime award in 1953. In reality, his latest cartoon depiction in the PewDiePie multimedia empire is in the latest mobile game, PewDiePie's Pixelings. But finishing on nothing but a teensy piece of pixel art strikes me as a little underwhelming. Can... can you even see that? And surely I couldn't just choose another one of his avatars arbitrarily. It's not like I'm making up the rules myself as I go along or something. So I suppose I have no choice but to fix all of them. Starting at the top, here's one of Baby's first end cards from circa 2012. Depicting Felix with props from Amnesia The Dark Descent. The game that put him, and his propensity for screaming, on the map. Now, while PyDye has often contentiously maintained that women aren't video games, it must also indeed be posited that Sweden aren't anime. You'll see that a common thread in these drawings is the sizable eyes. They've all been ocularly over-endowed. The real man's look holes are a little on the diminutive side, but still blue and piercing, like a stick of five gum, or Sonic the Hedgehog with a sword which did happen one time, for some reason. Early PewDiePie, oddly enough, had a different manner about him. Aside from his windswept Bieber bowl and more conservative intensity of facial scruff, he seemed milder and squintier in those days. Maybe he hadn't started wearing contacts yet. Persisting with the subject of eyes, Poopties are quite trapezoidal, leaning outwards, and there is an assertively broad hunk of nasal cartilage forcing them asunder. Now I loathe the word trope, it feels grubby and pretentious and just oozing with the smug self-satisfaction of academia. Nonetheless, a pretty common trope among these pewdy pictures is pewds having a small, small nose. And that's no great surprise, it's a cartoon thing, especially in those driving under the influence of anime. But we still come to the fact that the real Felix has a broad beak. My father would say that means there's more of him to love. Poodle Pie also has quite full lips. Which sounds stranger when I say it out loud than it looked on paper. But those are just the facts, ma'am. None of the cartoons really seize upon that, but a little virtual collagen ought to fix this right up. His eyebrows are essentially triangles, not equilateral, not isosceles, but scalene. These brow bugs can be almost aggressively horizontal, which in turn makes this usually placid Scandinavian look a little hostile. 
especially when he grows out his beard. Which between you and me, I think might actually grow up and into his brain. Things get weird when his beard grows out. <laughs> For a while, when PDP was indulging in precisely that, he also dyed his hair Draco Malfoy blonde. This is reflected in his branding and his demeanor. After reigning in his hirsutal expansionism for a while, he invested in some manner of crew cut and left his face salad to continue surging. It gives him a real skinhead biker look, which I feel doesn't do a whole lot for his image. All that said, when he wears his glasses, he looks less biker and more philosophy teacher. But what do I know? I'm not the one happily married with multiple houses and 104 million subscribers. This image of PewDiePie kicking a barrel from several years ago absolutely comes the closest of all of them to a real likeness. The artist has observed Felix's horizontal brow and intense expression, his long square jaw, his broad nose, and perhaps, most importantly, that weird thing he does with his mouth. The one that looks like that one meme of Leon from Resident Evil. Observing characteristic facial expressions is key to achieving the best possible likeness. Does someone smile a lot? Does someone rarely smile? Is someone capable of only a single facial expression? All important questions. Anyhow, I've taken the liberty of making some tweaks, including updating PewDiePie's hair and beard to the current firmware. There's the Viking mad lad we know and love. And finally, the cherry on top. Here's that tiny little sprite from earlier. Isn't he adorable? And that's just about all the time we have for today. Even after that, there are still PewDiePie drawings left over that need fixing. We'll have to save that for another occasion. But what did you think? Was I too hard on the YouTubers and their artists? Or not hard enough, perhaps? Were the drawings up to snuff in the end? Is there anyone else you would like to see get the same treatment? Let me know in the comments. And hey, if you enjoyed what you saw tonight, hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. And more fun stuff will be coming your way soon. And who knows? If I offended the right person with what I had to say tonight, that might just be a groveling apology video. Until next time, friends, this has been the Harry Gold Show. Stay beautiful and God bless.